Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do another picture here in the Ink House by Rory Dobner. And before I get into the picture I'm going to do, I wanted to um, send a little thank you out to one of my subscribers. She has a jewelry shop and um, she does hand beaded jewelry and she had sent me a beautiful bracelet here. So she does the um, beading on this along with the gorgeous sterling silver clasp on it. It's beauty, really pretty too. And then she also has the earrings that uh, match the bracelet set. And I just find this absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to uh, let you know about her shop. So I have her card here. And um, that is her information, her name, her shop down here and stuff. So I will leave a link down below on uh, how to get to her shop in case you are interested in uh, looking at her handmade jewelry and all the other beautiful pieces of jewelry she has in her shop. Thank you Rita so much. I just love those. They are absolutely gorgeous. Okay and then <laughs> I want to get into the coloring also. Like I said I'll leave a link down below to Rita's shop. Mother's Day is coming. You can always check it out and see if there's something in there you might want to get. So without any further ado, this is a little guy we're going to do here. His name is Huxley the Hedgehog. He sits in the corner on a cushion after the previous crowd surfing incident ended pretty badly. So I guess they had a party and little Huxley needs to sit down and take care of himself. <laughs> so we're going to use ink pens on him and get him colored up today. So I'll move the camera down and we will get started. Okay, here we are. We're going to um, do the chair first. The little green leaves back here and I picked out two colors of green, kind of vivid colors. So one is vivid green. Okay, and the other one is um, beach green. So kind of a little bit darker and the other one's brighter. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them on the little plastic cutting board that I have here. So quite bright green on there. And then just a deeper color to put in in the kind of center here. And we'll get the water brush out. Make sure we have enough water on there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just activate this one and uh, see how we do putting that down. It may be the only color I put on, I don't know. And just kind of touching all the leaves there. want to touch the wood up on the chair so I'm going to try to be careful there. So how are you all doing? Hope you're doing well. I went to the movie theaters this weekend had a good time there. I won't talk about the movie because I know some people haven't seen it yet. Okay. So just getting all the little leaves bright green. To me it just screamed a tropical look on the chair part. And I didn't mind going over the black making it easy with the ink temps to do this. It's 
one of the reasons I love using it in this book. The paper just takes to the ink tints really nice. There. Oh, because there's another arm over here. We've got some greenery going on that one too. Now I'll go ahead and activate this one and just kind of put it down in the um, crook of the leaf parts. Just to give a little bit of a dimensional look there to add a different color. You can go in with um, pencil and do that too if you want. Just find it quick and easy to do it this way. on his boots that are on the chair legs and we kind of want to make those kind of a dark color which I didn't get out. <laughs> I think I want to make them kind of black so I'll get out my little swatch book here and see what we have in the dark color. It's kind of a brown so we use the bark and the sepia ink I think those will work nicely I don't know if I got bark out or not nope I didn't so that and the indie ink okay we will scribble those down this will be the India ink up here and the bark down here Okay, try to keep it so you can see the, the colors I'm using up here. So the bark has got kind of a red tint to it and the India ink is just this nice dark gray and then you can mix the two and make a, a darker color. Hold on a second. So we're going to go ahead and um, start with the reddish. Uh, what did I call this? The two pens. It's not the ink. It's the uh, <sighs> bark. <laughs> and we're going to put that down on the darkest spots of the boot. And bring it out a little bit. And we'll see how this works with this color. There we go. We're going to go up the shoelaces too. was asked um, a question on if it's easier to lay down the ink using the pencil or doing it the way I'm doing it here by putting it on the paper. I tend to find it uh, easier for me to control the amount of color that I am putting down in certain areas when I do it this way. I can get the darkest spots where I want them and then I don't have to worry about laying down the pencil and which way it's going to um, push the ink and I don't have to turn my book around as much. When I put the pencil down, 
I tend to want to push the ink in the direction of the darkest areas and instead of moving the brush I have to move the book and of course recording it's a little easier if I am not moving the book all over the place. <laughs> Someone said it's easier for you guys, you don't get dizzy, but it's also easier for me that my desk isn't quite big enough to just keep moving the book all over the place. So that's the reason I do it this way. I find it uh, easier to mix colors this way also. So I'll just mix them on the palette instead of um, mixing the pencils on the paper. Might give the toe area a little bit more brightness with another color. I don't know. But for now that's what it's going to look like. Then I'm going to put some brown on here and we're going to do the chair legs. So I'm going to use amber Saddle brown and oak. So they're their numbers. And I'm just going to color those on here. Okay, so this is the oak, saddle brown, and the amber. So we should have kind of a yellow tone, the brownish red tone. Can you see that? Okay, and then the oak, which is kind of a dark tone. So I'm going to go in with the amber first and put it on like the highlighted areas. Highlighted areas on the wood are the places that have the um, basically the less pen, uh, pen lines. So that kind of helps out with the uh, highlights and the darkness on these books. So just kind of lay it down where you think the lightest part is. And we'll go up this side too. And up at the top up here. Kind of lay it down. in with the um, darker colors. So the next darkest is the saddle brown and we'll kind of add that in to give some shadow effect. The darkest color will go in the darkest spots. And we'll put some of that dark, dark color in here.
and then kind of blend these colors together to get a new tone. down here Okay, up at the top, kind of doing the same thing, blending all of those together and just kind of putting it in where it should be the darkest. Then I'm just going to go over it with the lightest color, which is the um, amber, just to get any of those colors that we missed. This arm. go we'll let that dry next we're going to do since I have these browns out I'm gonna go ahead and do our little hedgehog here and I need to get um, like a tan so I'll grab that out put that down and then I need the white because we have to kind of give him a, a creamy underside and then a dark outer side. So I'm just going to mix the white in with the tan and try to get a cream color. I'm going to lay that down first. And then we'll go in with the tan a bit around the edges. Darker brown. Just a saddle brown. It's okay if I go out on the cushion a little bit because I do the cushion in kind of a pink red brown a nice shadow on that little ears. Now because he was crowd surfing and I don't know if everybody knows what that is but in the mosh pit area of a live concert um, a member of the crowd or the band itself will do what they call crowd surfing and lay down on top of everybody's hands and they will move them around in the mosh pit above their heads. Now I would assume that if our little hedgehog here was the one up on top everybody's little hands would probably be pricked by his little 
<laughs> sharp quills here. I'm not sure how sharp they are. I've never petted a hedgehog, but I would assume they're sharper than they are soft. So they may have dropped him, which is pretty sad. He has a tiny little bandage on his foot here, which I am going to darken up. Just so we can see it. So if they drop the poor little guy, he's fallen on his foot and hurt his his little foot. That's why he's resting on the cushion. He's holding his other toes, but there we go. I think I'll give him some little pink cheeks if I can find the pink. It's the color I'm going to use for the um, cushion. So I'll put that down and then I need, do I have a really soft pink? <laughs> I'm hoping that's a soft pink. Who knows? It's going to be soft. I'm going to put a lot of water on it. And put some of that cream in there too. And we're just going to touch underneath his eyes with it. And give him a little nose. I don't know what color a hedgehog's nose is, but we're going to make his have a little pink on it. And we're pinking up his toes a little bit. Okay, I'll let him dry a little bit more before I add any more details, but we're going to go ahead and um, stick the color in around the pillow. We're going to do it. Um, carmine pink was used for the cheeks, and then we're going to use this color here for the pillow. Okay. Add it in the darkest spots first and bring it out. And then just kind of fade the coloring out into the pillow. Okay, I've laid down a lot of water on the pillow, so I'm just taking the brush while it's real wet and putting it on one fourth of this pillow cushion. So when I lay down the ink, it'll bleed a little bit, but it'll also be easier for me to blend it. And then kind of working in the, the way the cushion would be, uh, you know, squashed on him and then pulled out and then darker around the edges. That's the way I'm going. It has a um, kind of a grayish tint to the pillow, so putting down this ink is going to not be the same color as if you had picked it up and put it on white paper. But that's okay. Gives it a nice shading Kind of a cool color.
and just work around till you get the desired effect you want. And you can always go back in there with um, pencil. A little white in here also. Um, the Prisma white will kind of highlight the soft places in here. I'm just adding in some darker areas to give it the look of the fabric folds. And I'm getting really quiet, sorry. <laughs> I always have to remind myself to speak up when I'm on camera or when I'm filming. I'm going to add a little bit more up here, kind of bring it down a little. Okay. And I kind of have to let that dry, but we're going to take in the, um, where do I have the driest spot here? the white prisma and you can just add in some extra lines in here to highlight the cushiness of this pillow. same technique I used to on the kitty cat's bed to make the ruffles in that. So we'll just go around and add that in in areas. Also pulling it from the top of the pillow. And you just keep going around with that. And the color that we can use to um, pencil-wise to give it darker red to it is the black raspberry that I'm trying to find on my desk. It's a small little pencil. <laughs> um, hold on. Okay, black raspberry. Like I said, it's a small little pencil, 1095, and the um, white was uh, 238. And I'm going to just take it and pull some of that out also. In between doing this and adding the white and the ink tints that's in the background, I'm going to get a really nice soft looking pillow. So little Huxley can be comfy. in more color around the edges.
So we'll just play with this until I get enough color on there to and it looks like it's soft. put a little black around the corners too. Should just probably work on one little corner just to darken that up a little bit. You go back between the uh, colors. I'll darken up his nose too. I don't think hedgehogs have pink noses. those little spots again so basically that's how the whole pillow will be done a lot of work on that one <laughs> and if we need to we'll add in any uh, dark tones of the wood and since I have polychromos out on my desk this is the burnt sienna and I'll just go in and add some highlights on the wood. With this color. Just in the dark areas like that. finish up the uh, pillow and I am going to give him his little black nose and I think I have a creamy color for his um, skin here somewhere I have light peach but I don't know that's going to be too pink. Um, how do I have up here? I don't really want to do him in white. But we can add some white on him. I think his cheeks got a little pink. So I'll lighten those up a little. And then I'm going to add 
Ooh, this one I have to look for. I'm going to put a little bit of um, black gel pen on his eyes. I couldn't find the uh, black pen, but I did color his eyes in a little bit with a black pencil. And then I'm just going to add, if I can, the pen will work. <laughs> Sorry. This is a uh, white jelly roll pen. I'm just going to add some white dots in his eyes there. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is finish the um, pillow work off camera. And um, a little more shading on the chair. And then I'll come back and we're going to put a little bit of a background on the page. So I'll be back in a moment. Pillow is done. A little shiny, but that's okay. It's because I did it with Prismacolor. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, Distress Ink in the background. I'm going to use this Victorian Velvet. Thought it might go nicely with the pillow and kind of highlight everything else. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. All I do is load up one fourth or one half of the ink pad. Try not to get it up, up here on the um, pad, just down here halfway up. So I'll just tap it in there and then I'm going to use that as my guide of where I'm putting the ink and I'll go in on a dark area and just bring some of that ink underneath the chair here next to the boots where they're the darkest and then I'll bring some down on both sides here. Add a little in the boot if I like for the highlight. Get in the nooks and crannies around the pillow and around the chair. And we're going to add water to it so if it gets a little blotchy it's okay. I'm going to put it up in the words too. just on one side I think so up by the H and kind of coming down on this side of the chair questions on how I did this too so but I do it on camera and we're going to take a um, washcloth it's just a one of my rags use water from a spray bottle I have the Tim Holtz uh, sprayer it kind of splats it down and we're just gonna spray on the ink here kind of in a big splot like that I don't know if you can see that we're going to count down and then we're just going to wipe it up and it leaves um, the splotchy effect that I like a lot so I use it with the Distress Sink and if you have a spot that you don't like you can always use the water to blend it out let's see here um, like up here by the H. If you see there's a kind of a curve line here and I don't want that there so I'm just going to take the water it's on my water brush and kind of smear it around a bit and wipe that up. Because it's water based it will move a little for you so if there's an exact spot you don't like you can just take the water brush and get it wet and move that ink around and soften it up a little bit. Okay, then we're going to spray it down here. It takes um, a few seconds for the water to lift up the ink. So I found in this one it's pretty quick. Some books it takes up to 10 seconds to count out. <laughs> 
and get a little more in here. So wherever you want to get that uh, splattering effect. Instead of using Distress Ink for this, you could also use your um, pastels and um, use an eraser to get them to lift. I'm pretty sure water will lift them too, but I'm, I've never done it because I don't use um, pastels <laughs> that much. I've got uh, pan pastels, which I use to color skin tones and stuff with. And a little more on this side. And the longer you let it sit, the more ink it'll lift up. And there we go. So it gives us this really cool effect. And then if you want um, more uh, than just that look, this is the stamp I use. It's stamping up itty bitty background stamp. It was um, 1997 is when it came out. It comes in a set of four. So it's just got the dots and I just put it in the ink pad and then where I want some dots I'll just lay it down and use it in different areas with different amount of ink on it. So for one heavy ink and then do it again and the lighter it gets. You can also um, ink it off on another piece of paper. So if you um, want it really light, just take a, a blank piece of paper and ink it off first and then put it down on the page. And I think we'll put one over here. And then we're done. And I think that turned out really cute. What I'll do is I'll take a picture of it and you will see it at the end of the video. Thanks guys for watching. Put a few more dots there. <laughs> and I will leave all my information, including where you can uh, find the uh, beautiful jewelry that Rita makes, down in the description box below. So all the pencils will be down there, all the ink I've used, and I left it all on my desk, so I'll put it down in there for you. I hope you had a great day, or have a great day. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. So I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.